Hello everyone, Experimental Dev here, my name is Yutro, and today we're gonna talk about documentation for GraphQL. When you hear word documentation, you're probably picturing something which reminds you of Apollo Studio documentation page or Swagger documentation page, and don't get me wrong, those kinds of documentation are good enough. But when I think about it, I think that I would like to see something like a bird eye view of my documentation, where you could quickly jump between different parts here and there and see what is connected to what. Something like bird eye view in VS Code, when, when you have it on the, on the left, no, on the, it depends on your configuration. In my case, it's on the right side and you have it, this tiny panel, which shows you how much code you have, and you could jump between different parts of this uh, code. Or something a little bit better, like SQL Builder in PHP My Admin. Yeah, I'm that old. So yeah, but you know, back then it was a very nice tool and a lot of people still use it. And there you could actually see models and different connections between one model to another based on which field it's connected and so on. So I started to dig deeper and I told myself before reinvent the wheel, please check because it might be already invented and guess what it is it is already invented so meet voyager voyager it's the tool that allows you visualize your graphql schema make it playable so you could jump between different parts click here and there see different fields different models uh, description if you put any also it's a good trigger for you to put documentation because when you will see it in voyager you will see that you have only fields and types but no description for those types. There are a few ways to integrate it into your project. In this video, I will show you how to do it as a standalone application. I chose this version because I have three points for that. So number one, I don't want to mix my documentation with the backend or frontend code. So I don't want it to be in those repos. I want it to be as a somewhere there because it's kind of, you know, Linux principle, single responsibility and so on. So one thing should do one thing good. So the, the, the second reason I don't want to rebuild this Voyager application after any changes to schema, kind of, you know, build once, use always something like this approach. And number three, I don't want to extend CI time by building this application every time, even with few extra seconds. But if you want to integrate it to build process, feel free to check Voyager documentation. Link will be there. So enough words, let's start to integrate it. Now we open our terminal and first thing we need to do, we need to create a folder and initialize project with NPM. So I will say make dear GraphQL Voyager example, and then I will navigate to this folder and then I will init project with NPM. Now we have our project. The next step is to install required dependencies. What we need to install, we need to install Apollo server because I need some server to demonstrate and send requests to this server. Also, I will need GraphQL and I will need serve to serve my standalone Voyager application. And I want NPM all because I, for demonstration purposes, I want to put it inside uh, one folder and run everything at once. Now all the dependencies installed and we can go to our editor. In our editor, we need to create a couple of folders and files. Let's go to terminal. We need to create folder for our dummy server. Also file for our schema. Now we have a GraphQL server folder and we have index.js and schema.js, which are empty for a moment. We need to pre-populate it with some schema. I'm gonna reuse schema from my previous project, which is Mirage GraphQL. You can see those videos if you want on my channel. I have a dedicated list for that. So feel free to check them out. So we have this schema, as you can see. Now we can go back to our server index.js file. And also we need to populate it with some dummy server. I already prepared this. We have Apollo server, which is imported from Apollo server, Apollo server standalone, and schema from our schema.js. Basically here we just run server. We don't put any resolvers because we don't need them. We need to only send one request from Voyager to get only schema from the server. And this example is enough for us. We will do the job. Now we need to create folder for Voyager. Voyager and inside this directory we need to create index.js file. 
here we populate a script for our Voyager. Basically, this script is just a function which will send a fetch request to our GraphQL server. And at the end, it will run GraphQL Voyager schema. And after successful response, it will run init method on GraphQL Voyager object and put it into Voyager node on the DOM. Also, we need to say what is the root type because when Voyager starts to work, it's starting to work from root type. If we won't do that, it will take query as a root type and it will omit mutation. So basically in the documentation, we will see only query schema and all its children, but not mutation. And we don't want that. So we need to create a root type. And with this, we need to jump for a second to our schema.js and we need to define this root type here. Usually it's not defined in many schemas, but only for Voyager we need to do that but it's not gonna break anything for our let's say flow so we can easily add it and here we say pipe root and inside this type we say query which is query and we say mutation which is mutation and this type will be used as an entry point for our Voyager. The last, we need to go to our Voyager folder and we need to create index.html file and we need to pre-populate it with some code I already prepared. Basically here, what we are using, we use CDN to take React. We use also CDN for React DOM. And we use, again, CDN to fetch NPM package for Voyager, CSS, and Voyager JS. And here we put some height. You can omit it if you want, but I prefer to keep. And we import our Voyager JS and also our entry point, which is a DOM node with ID Voyager. And basically that's it. So now we need to run it because I said we are going to use npm run all. I want to run it with one single comment. So we need to extend our scripts section. We will need a script to start our GraphQL, which is start GraphQL. And here we will, with Node.js, we simply run our GraphQL server index.js. Then we need another script to start our Voyager index HTML because I mentioned that I want to run everything with one comment, we need to use our run p, which is a short version of npm run all in parallel. That's why npm run p. Let's run this. We forgot to specify type module because in our GraphQL server, we use imports not require. Let's add it. And then let's restart it. Here you can see that our server started on localhost 4000 and our serve started on localhost 3000. So let's go to our browser and check port 3000 and hit enter. And, and nothing is happening. Application is hanging in loading state. Let's quickly check why. Okay, we cannot find Voyager.js script. Let's go back to our editor and fix it. And here, yes, we named it as index.js, but here we say Voyager.js. Okay, basically, let's rename it. And now our ID sees it. Let's restart our server and let's go back to our browser and refresh. And as you can see, let's close DevTools. Voyager started. So basically, this is what we wanted. We can drag and move. We can click here and there. As I said, that's why we need a root type, because as you see, everything starting in one single type. If we wouldn't have it, it would take only query and it would show us only connection between query and to do, but it would emit mutation. But because we did kind of technical type only to have both query and mutation available under it, we have the entire picture here and you can zoom in zoom out if you want behind my picture there is there are a few controllers if i will make screen a bit smaller you can see them you can zoom out zoom in reset here as i said it's very easy to see that someone which is me didn't put any description what is to do so we know the code we know the model but we don't know what to do is so basically it would be nice practice to put some description for example if i will do it like this if i will jump to my schema and i will find my to do object which is here and then i will say this is to do object and if i will restart everything also you know maybe let's put additional documentation here to demonstrate how it looks for fields so this field this field say says when to do any Description might be better. It's just my, you know, dumb example. Don't take it close to your heart. So restart everything again and everything is started. Let's go back to our browser and refresh the page. 
and as you see we have nice description here what it is and if we will click on this field we could basically see that completed which is type boolean and there is description says when to do is finished but without is anyway typo this is what i wanted to show you today i hope it, it was helpful for you in my case i'm going to use it the way so i will put it as a standalone application and every time i go here which won't be local host for now it's local host so every time that i will go I will see the latest schema because under the hood what we are doing we sending request to our GraphQL server we fetch schema and based on this schema we build this so for today that's it thank you for watching if this video sucked you know what to do if this video good you also know what to do so see you next time bye